Hello, and welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. Each episode, we talk about a particular topic in the life of a professor. We are tenure-track faculty members in the sciences, working at a primarily undergraduate university in California. The purpose of our podcast is reflection, so we bring something we think is working and something we're working on to discuss. Welcome to the Professor Podcast with Ruth and Claire. I'm Ruth. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to talk about virtual labs. But first, Ruth, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I um, I have been talking a lot on here about the AAPT meeting. And this week I went to it but by going into my bedroom and going on the computer. But I went to it anyway, and it was super energizing and awesome and exciting and wonderful. And I, it was just great. It was really good. Awesome. Yeah. What, what attributes would you recommend to people? I just, you know, um, I didn't think it would still be the same magic because it was online. So I didn't sure. like have a lot of faith in that. And it still was. And then I think I was excited about my talk. I was really happy with how it went. It was super surreal having recorded it beforehand. It gave me a lot of time to fret about things that I had submitted. You know what I mean? Then like you can't uh-huh. do anything about it. But it was kind of it was very different than my usual sort of half writing stuff the night before. So that was definitely different, but I, um, I just really liked it. I think I've been thinking a lot about, um, anti-racism and equity and sort of things like that about a grant that I'm writing and just having people like, especially the sessions I went to just talking about that so openly and so awesomely. And it was just super exciting to hear what people are doing and it gave me great hope. That's about wonderful. Physics, which is not something I have all the time. So it was like, <laughs> oh, wow, like all these people are doing such cool stuff. And yeah, that's awesome. it was super cool. What does AAPT stand for again? That is a good point. It is the American Association of Physics Teachers. Wonderful. So, yeah, I've heard lots of great things about that from from you mostly, but also from other people. It seems like it must be a great, great conference. It just is like this whole vibe that is just so unlike other large gatherings of physicists I've been at. And so, yeah, just very, very, you know, because it's for all physics teachers. So it's high school teachers, two-year colleges, four-year colleges, R ones. Like, it's just this whole pod. And I think that's super cool. And you kind of end up hearing things that you would never be exposed to. So I'm into it. Totally. Oh, I love it. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, How about you? I've been thinking a lot about it's kind of coming to the end of my time with my summer undergraduate research students and so trying to like you know wrap up things so they're at a good stopping point when they're done and um and as the same as every summer feeling like how will I get anything done when they stop working full time you know because they've just been so awesome um but they're both well trained on on virtual things and they're working with me this fall so so that's good I'll still I'll still have their expertise with me okay cool yeah yeah, yeah. I'm. I we, maybe we need to have a whole other recap about summer research because I have, I have lots of lots of things about that too. Yeah, it's but, a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. So, do you um, are you okay if I do my quote? Yeah, go for it. Okay. I also want to say that um, often we record after the kids' bedtime, and we are recording not after the kids' bedtime, so there is some <laughs> interesting noises happening in the background. So, just in case people That's are wondering what that, what is. that is, yeah. So this quote is a quote by Audre Lorde and she is a poet and was a poet and professor at Hunter College in New York and I think it's a quote that I'm still kind of digesting but it's something I've been ruminating on and her quote is the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house and I think it's really making me think about I think she like I've been hearing it a lot in like a social justice context and actually from Brene Brown, because always Brene Brown, but like talking about how shame is not a good tool for social justice because, ah. you know, you're kind of, it's just still this like power structure and whoever is in charge, like we just need to completely reimagine everything. And so I think a lot of stuff I heard at the AAPT felt like that, like a complete reimagining of how we can participate in physics and how we can be in the classroom Interesting. and how we can kind of highlight all sorts of people's inputs and so yeah I think it felt particularly resonant for me at the moment and how yeah I think this is very this is, I'm starting dark but not I'm not meaning it as dark as it seems but sometimes 
as professors, like people just repeat the way they were treated without oh, sure. like necessarily reflection and maybe just interrupting that a little bit. Totally. Like being intentional and thinking about what the goals are. Well, we every few years in Ireland we have this crisis with junior doctors where okay. they're worked like just insane amounts, like 100 hour weeks and stuff. And then something terrible happens where somebody misses something or something happens. And everybody's like, this is crazy. We should never have people working this much. This is awful. Uh huh. And then this whole kind of vibe of like, well, we went through it. So, you know, right. like it's just this weird perpetuating of something that everyone agrees is awful, mm-hmm. but we still keep pushing along yeah. with it. So, yeah. Anyway. Reimagining. That's, yeah. I like that. That's my thoughts. But so tell me, virtual labs... There's going to be a lot of um, hand wringing from me and <laughs> gnashing of teeth. So do you have anything super, super positive you want to start with? Well, you're definitely not alone with the hand wringing about virtual labs. Um, I guess I wanted to start off by mentioning a few things that I've heard people are doing that seem cool. Like um, one thing I've run into is people talking about making micro labs where you put just a little bit, this is for chemistry, I guess, oh, cool. um, where you put a little bit of a chemical on a piece of paper and then you can just mail it. Like it's a tiny amount. Hazards are way reduced and it's just a piece of paper. And then you can, um, you know, add something else to it. And as it moves across the paper, the chemical reaction occurs and you can look at colors or something Ooh. like that. And people have apps on their phones where you can quantify how red that dot is to you know, give you some indication. So anyway, I I think that's really cool that we're coming up with all these awesome mailable things. And then uh, there's also um, kits you can get where you mail kits out to people. And those are, you know, not micro kits, but um, you actually get, you know, appreciable volumes of liquid and mix them together and that kind of stuff. And that works too. Um, And then you can also, of course, I've heard of people coming up with awesome things that people can do at home, like, Let's just use whatever measurement equipment you have and mix, you know, an acid Hope and base that you have. you're not going to make them make chlorine and, gas. Yeah, we're not. Bath. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's an important aspect to be safe about. But, um, yeah, I think it's, um, it's kind of an opportunity to really come up with some broad array of options for at-home labs. Um, and, of course, yeah. there's tons of on-the-computer virtual labs that are being um, – explored as well right now so i i just wanted to mention the array of possibilities that people are exploring um so what's working for me about virtual labs i think is considering what my learning goals are for the particular lab for that particular class because um you know so often it's like well these are the normal five labs that we do and so i just want to do those um but in the conversion to virtual to figure out what is best to do, it seems like figuring out exactly what the actual goals of those labs are is really helpful. So last semester I was teaching instrumental analysis, and so I had some goals like learning how the instruments work, gaining experience using the instrument, um, and then mastering preparing samples for the instrument and assessing the results. So like exposure to the instruments and how they work, and then mastering preparing everything to to use the instrument and get the results. So with with being virtual and, and them not being able to actually hands-on with the instrument, I felt like, well, I still want them to be working on how the instrument works so we can at least work on that theoretically. Mm-hmm. And then also the preparing samples for instruments and assessing results, we can still work on their mastery of that. So what I ended up doing um, was they would write their in-lab protocols like exactly, like it'd be more detailed than a methods paper kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It'd be more like I would take a 25 milliliter volumetric flask and I would add this much of this powder, you know, um, whereas in a methods paper, you might just say I would make two molar hydrochloric acid. This time they would tell me exactly how they would do it. Um, So they would still think through all that preparation. Then I gave them data and then they had to assess the results in a laboratory report format. So I guess what I'm saying is thinking about exactly what my goals were and realizing that a lot of them was the preparation to use the instrument helped me figure out what I wanted to do for the virtual lab for them to still think about the preparation 
even though they weren't actually in the lab doing the preparation, you know? That's super interesting. Um, I'm just going to harp on and on about the AAPT meeting the whole time. But anyway, there was one talk and it was someone kind of just doing, like saying, hey, don't just dump all of your labs onto the computer. Like this is a perfect opportunity to stop and think about the learning goals of your labs, you know, and really figure mm-hmm. out what is the thing you want to... Because remember our, our earlier episode about labs and I was like, I actually don't know what the point of most of my labs are. And so... totally. Yeah, this is a good time, right, to get down to the nuts and bolts of like what you actually want them to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and that, you know, coming to a crystal clear idea of what you want them to get out of it will really make it easier, actually, to create a virtual lab um, or a, a virtual plan for what you're going to do for the lab. And like, I assume for all of these pieces of equipment, like there is just like things and niggles that are just particular to that equipment but I guess like the whole skill set right is like you said like developing the samples and then I guess being able to really read the instructions and pay attention to totally you know yeah totally yeah of course there's yeah nothing can substitute hands-on using the instrument but you can still learn how the instrument works and think about how you'd prepare your samples to use on that instrument and then work with the data from the instrument Mm -hmm. which is about as good as you can get I think without actually being at the instrument yeah yeah Cool. So, so what about you? What's um, what's working for you with virtual labs? Well, I think um, one thing that's working for me, and I, I find that there's this fine line between hearing about what people are doing and being excited about it, and hearing about what people are going to do, and then like wanting to take a nap because it's really overwhelming and people are doing <laughs> totally, so many things and being like, oh. So I think I'm trying to be a little simpler about it. And so uh-huh. one thing that's really lucky for me is my class that I'm teaching. The main class that I'm teaching is this intro to mechanics. So it's like how things move and velocity and acceleration. It's the first physics course in the sequence. And there's a software that I've used before, but not really. But it's like you can take a video of something and then you can do kind of stop motion and put dots where the thing is and then get a position graph and turn that into a velocity graph. How awesome. So that's kind of cool. That's like our first few labs normally and so I'm going to try and do that like some version of that so like people will have this on their own device and then toss whatever they want to around the room that sounds fun yeah so I think and it was like 50 dollars or something for a site license for the university and then you can just send them a link and they can do it so I think what I'm gonna do is have I've only gotten as far as the first three labs even thinking about them not writing them but I'm gonna make them be a two-week project and the first whole, like up till the first midterm, it's going to be tooling around with this software. Cool. Like kind of, you know, getting motion graphs of stuff. And so there's that. And then the that other thing. Awesome. Yeah. So I think that's a real, like, it's just a bonus that that exists and I can do that. And what's that and software then, called? It's called Vernier Video Physics. Okay. Cool. I think. I'm sure. I'm nearly sure. But <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing. I'm having a lot of anxiety and angst about groups and labs and communication. and But I did a course at our university about online teaching and engagement. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we had to do was come up with an assignment. And so I've come up with, at like the midway point of the semester, I'm going to do a discussion that's like my favorite lab. Okay. And like, have you used VoiceThread before? No. What is it's it? This, it's a thing where like you can have like a PowerPoint slide and then people can comment on that slide, either with a video or audio sort of thing. And then you can comment on other people's comments. That sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It, it, it definitely, I'm old, so it took me a while to figure it out. But so I'm sure a young person will figure it out just fine. <laughs> but um, so I think what I'll do is like you have to pick your favorite lab and just make like a really short video uh-huh. about why that was your favorite lab and what you would change. What would okay. be the thing you would change? And then you have to kind of comment on each other's and say you know just to have some I'm really anxious about the kind of communication and community aspect so I think this was an assignment that I made up for this course but now I'm into the idea so I think that's great and how perfect to make up an assignment for a course that's actually something you're excited about well like and I think I have a lot of anxiety about those kind of assignments that there's going to be pushback from students being totally this isn't physics like what is this nonsense you know but I think there's more 
the more I'm hearing, like, it seems like there's more acknowledgement that we have to do these kind of things for, like, especially in an intro class to get right. some confidence and community and chat happening. So, totally. Yeah. So tell me what you're working on. Well, that's interesting. Um, it relates to what you were just talking about. Oh, I'm okay. working on how to recreate the natural interactions and peer instruction that goes with them that happens in a face-to-face laboratory. So, you know, somebody's like trying to make a measurement and the person next to them is like, hey, how did you get such, you know, how, I don't know, you know, just the communication that's going on as they're watching each other and saying, oh, you should swirl your flask or whatever, that kind of thing. Um, How to foster that if we're not face-to-face? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Uh Like, are you going to put them in groups? Because that's... Yeah. Oh, that's freaking me out. Well, that's that's yeah. So I'm thinking about having groups um, form a team and kind of meet to touch base. But I'm not sure how formal I would want that to be. Like, um, do they meet during lab time? Is does it become a group project? Because normally I have them do lab individually, and I think that's kind of an important step for my class. Mm. So I don't really want to lose that individuality. Um, but it would be nice if they had a little group that they could. I don't know, maybe just like on Canvas, have them have a group for chatting about stuff as they're going through the lab or something like that. Somehow, rather than, I don't want it to be a whole class discussion, but if they were in little groups, maybe they could. But then how much do I want to foster that discussion? Does it become an assignment or is it simply a resource? You know, I haven't quite figured that aspect out, but I, I do think something to do with groups and and like, yeah, the the online discussion. Seems we like that um, would help. as part of this class that I took, mm-hmm. we were put sometimes for our online discussions. We were put into smaller groups of like four, uh-huh. and you were in one discussion forum. I don't know how to do that, but do I think work. it was yeah, it was really good. And it's the kind of thing that you do because you have to, mm-hmm. but then it actually works and you get good stuff out of it. Like you're yeah. like, fine, I'll do this for the five points, but then it's actually like, oh, that was helpful. And so I wonder, yeah, yeah, I think. I think um, if it's something you want them to do, I think I would definitely make that it makes graded. Sense. And yeah. Even if it is super like, okay, you have to go and comment on someone else's post. Like, right. They might I accidentally mean, it could be as simple as ask one question and comment on two other people's questions or something. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, that's a good idea. It has to be required or it's not going to form. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's because right. like when I was doing this course, I, I think there was a couple of things that were optional and just because of the time crunch I was under totally I didn't do them so yeah yeah, yeah. But that's cool yeah well that's good I'm this is helpful your your experience that you're talking about is making me feel like I should do this and yeah little groups learning management system some simple assignment that will hopefully stimulate discussion and involve discussion that seems like that could help cool yeah yeah <laughs> so what are you working on <laughs> so it's a big sigh um I'm I'm really nervous about the groups and I think I know a lot of people are quite intentional about group things mm-hmm. and I literally just let it happen like they just wherever they end up sitting in the classroom they usually just group up with their neighbors and if that person was horrible the next week they come and sit somewhere else and group up <laughs> with their neighbors and so it kind of you know happens that way so I guess I'm going to be assigning groups right I'm just I'm super anxious about it and I'm super anxious about how micromanaging to be like at first I had a thought like okay you're gonna meet and do this lab together at some point over the two weeks Mm -hmm. and you have to send me a zoom invite to your meeting Mm -hmm. like I'm not gonna go or take a screenshot of yourselves at your zoom meeting you know yeah there's a like I struggle a lot with this class because there's very different levels of expertise coming in right and people can get very like oh like so and so knows everything I'm just gonna step back and not Uh even you know so I'm just anxious about the kind of situation that could happen is basically one person does the lab right and yeah so I don't know and I don't know whether I don't know how much to insert myself into that and so I think what I'm wondering about is like equal workload Mm -hmm. like how do we do it and with this video physics thing I would really like 
like there's always going to be one person who's like woohoo I love a new piece of software I'm super excited to like drive this car around my house and like you know video it and that's what I'm excited about and so obviously people should get to do what you know you can divide workload that way Mm -hmm. but I want everybody to try it and so I don't know how to like part of me was like should there be a lab exam where like you're gonna have to redo some portion of some lab or I don't know Hmm. so well could it be as simple as whatever aspects you want them all to try they have to submit some evidence, like just a picture of them oh. driving the car around or whatever. Yeah. Um, if that's something you want them to all do. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I could like, this is the main lab and you can do this complicated video, but everyone has to submit a little video that they made. Yeah. And like it's fine it. if you rely on one person to do the, like the main, main video, data. but mm-hmm. I need you all to at least experience the software. Yeah. Okay. That could work. Yeah. I feel very anxious, too, about how much work I'm going to be asking from them. I know. Because I'm thinking about cutting a bunch of content, kind of like, um, kind of like, you know, how it often is with active learning. You cover less content, but you spend more time with it and hopefully they get it more Mm -hmm. deeply. I'm kind of feeling like it might be a similar thing here where in order to have nice interaction with the material, maybe just cut a little bit out, you know? Yeah. So I don't know if that's helpful with all the stuff you're thinking of asking them to do. But yeah, well, it's I think even because normally we'd have a lab every week. So I mm-hmm. think I'm going to make it a two week thing. But I'm thinking about having like I was going to I'm going to record lectures. Sorry, I'm getting into bigger things than labs that's here. Fine. But I was going to record lectures and then like have some kind of quiz after uh-huh. the lectures. But then there's going to be like a problem solving quiz as well. And there's also homework. And then there I might see. be a lab assignment. And there might be a reading assignment. It just feels like, are mm-hmm. they going to just rebel? Because like to do the amount of work that we would cover if we were meeting, because in right. this class we normally meet for, I can't do the math, seven hours a week. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to be meeting for two hours a week. Right. On Zoom. But then, I don't know. It's tricky. I think we've talked about this before, but having super consistent due dates and yes. formats can really help alleviate the too many assignments craziness. Um, so I don't know, maybe you could always have the lab assignment due every two weeks on lab day and always have yeah. the lecture quiz is you have to do it right after the lecture. Or I, I mean, well, I, I got an lot, email but... from a student and she kind of wrote this very detailed email like just in general for our department about like she would really prefer having synchronous classes Mm -hmm. and you know and I was really thinking about that and for really complicated stupid boring reasons I'm not able to have synchronous classes Mm -hmm. the whole week because other classes are overlapping or whatever is happening but part of me was like it seemed like what she was really looking for was accountability and the fact that if you don't show up to class Mm -hmm. your professor knows you know what I mean? And so that's what I was right. trying to build in with right. all these quizzes and stuff. But I just don't know when it gets well, tipped that could, over that's into. Well, that's a good point. I mean, it could be, you could say something simple like there's every day that you would normally come to class, there's going to be something you need to do for this class. Okay, I like um, that. And one thing I really find helpful is the Canvas due dates and how you can make them, if you put the due dates in Canvas... I'm sure other learning management systems do this too. Then they have a little calendar of like, these all things are due. So that can help with accountability. And you would know within one day if they didn't do their quiz or whatever. Yeah. This Um, is weird, a weird thing, right? Because last semester I was unusually organized on Canvas and uh I had all of the quiz dates in for the whole semester. And I had, and one student was like, I hate that. Like I like it more because like then when it creates something, it tells you, Mm -hmm. but I think it was just him because other people were like, I like having the long view of being able to see everything that's coming. Interesting. But so, hmm. Hmm. The other thing we're I was not going to win about, every battle. No, we're not. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> about groups. I always feel like there's a balance between if you leave the same group together for the whole semester or a longer time, that's good because then they get a system down and they trust each other and they're comfortable with each other. Um, but if there's some issue in the group, I know. then it continues for the whole semester. So um, the balance I've kind of settled on is keep the groups together for a few weeks and then change them up or something like that. I know other people come to different balances and there's 
good reasons for all kinds of ends of that spectrum. Um, but those seem to be the two, you know, balancing forces to me. Yeah, and I think I think especially because they're not going to interact with each other. Right. You know, like we do need to like have this like yeah. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder cuz I I really struggle with the group dynamics and I'm not mindful about it at all. Mm. So maybe this will be a wonderful opportunity. Wonderful to opportunity. Find it. Yeah. That's how I'm trying to frame <laughs> some of these things. But um, I know. Somebody yeah. at the, I went to the Cottrell Scholar Conference recently and somebody oh, said, cool. "Don't let uh, we don't want to let the crisis go unutilized or something like that. Totally. And like, I mean, it's a great just, opportunity for revamping stuff and really thinking about our goals. And, absolutely. And society wise, too. Mm-hmm. Like we could learn some things from this. Totally. Do I think we will? Maybe not. But I mean, you <laughs> never know. It's a wonderful opportunity. So we're going to say that. But um, yeah. yeah. OK, cool. I'm feeling pretty overwhelmed but a little better for having <laughs> talked about it, yeah. I know I feel like the good ideas and I I'm excited to well, see about how to incorporate them it's progress because at the beginning of the summer yes. I was like I cannot visualize anything to do with labs like this is impossible so totally yeah we're getting totally there. yeah yeah cool okay thank you Claire thank you thanks so much. Ralph thanks Ralph thanks so much for joining us on the professor podcast with Ruth and Claire We're delighted to have you as a listener and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to email us, our address is contactprofessorpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear any of your suggestions for future shows or professor quotes that you might want to share with us, or even just things that have come up for you when you were listening to previous episodes. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, we would love if you would spread the word. So the best way to spread word is by telling people, you know, if you think they should listen to it, or you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.